Hello class let us continue the lesson is matter around a sphere in the previous classes we have studied about mixtures and few methods of separation of components of mixture let us continue the lesson okay now let us study how can we obtain pure copper sulfate from an impure sample to obtain crystals of pure copper sulfate salt from an impure sample we can choose the method of crystallization for this method we require impure sample of copper sulfate beaker china dish glass rod take about 5 grams of impure sample of copper sulfate in a china dish we have to dissolve it in minimum amount of water and filter the copper sulfate solution in order to remove the insoluble impurities after that we have to heat the copper sulfate solution gently on a water bath till it becomes saturated and reaches its crystallization point how can we check the crystallization point so it can be checked by taking some solution on a glass rod and waving it in air if you just shake your hand then we can see that a solid film or small crystals is formed on the glass rod then further heating has to be stopped this indicates that the solution has been concentrated to crystallization point next you have to place the china dish on the table after covering it with a watch glass we have to leave it undisturbed at room temperature to cool slowly and it takes for about one day we have to observe it carefully what may happen crystals of copper sulfate can be seen in the china dish along with the residue liquid which is left after crystallization now we understood that hot and concentrated solution of any pure substance forms crystals on heating gradually what is crystallization it is a process that separates a pure solid in the form of its crystals from a solution actually crystallization technique is considered to be better than evaporation technique you know why because during evaporation some solids decompose or some solids like sugar may get charred on heating and some impurities may remain dissolved in the solution even after filtration so on evaporation these contaminate the solid that is why crystallization technique is considered to be better than simple evaporation technique where is this crystallization process used it is commonly used to purify salt that we get from sea water it is also used in the separation of crystals of alum from impure samples in cities drinking water is supplied from water works so a diagram is given in order to study the water purification system in water works how can we purify the surface water in order to purify the surface water we need to follow four steps that is sedimentation loading filtration and chlorination let us study in detail now first of all what happens in sedimentation tank the river water is pumped into a series of sedimentation tanks in these tanks water is allowed to stay for a day so when it is allowed to stay as it is without disturbance heavy particles and clay and other impurities settle down at the bottom due to the effect of gravity the super natent water is then sent to another tank known as loading tank what may happen in the loading tank 
Water is treated with chemicals that is alum and lime to get further settling of impurities. When chemicals are treated in the water or with the water, there is settling of impurities in the loading tank also. Then water is passed on to the next tank known as the filtration tank. Here the clear water from the second tank is pumped into filtration tank where sand and gravel filter completely removes the suspended impurities. Whatever impurities are there in that water will get settled here in the filtration tank. Then the water is passed on to the next tank known as chlorination tank. The clear water is chlorinated with a calculated amount of chlorine in this tank. So what may happen when chlorine is added to water? Chlorine kills harmful bacteria and germs and it provides safe drinking water. So the safe drinking water is then supplied to different houses. Understood the method of purification of water? Okay. Usually there are two types of changes that occur around us. That is physical and chemical changes. What do you mean by physical change? It is a change in which no new substance is formed. For example, glowing of a bulb. Ice getting converted into liquid. In these two examples, no substances, no new substances are formed. Isn't it children? Yes. In case of physical changes, mass of the substance also does not change. Energy is neither absorbed nor released. It is reversible reaction that is interconvertible state of matter. It can be converted back into its original state. In the examples of glowing of bulb, if you switch it off, the light gets off. So, there is no new substance formed. Understood about the physical change? A change in which a no new substance is formed. Here mass does not change and energy is neither absorbed nor released. It is reversible change. Whereas in case of chemical changes, new substances will be formed. For example, burning of magnesium ribbon. When magnesium ribbon is burned in presence of oxygen, magnesium oxide is formed, which is a white powder-like substance. One more example is rusting of iron. So, iron reacts with oxygen to form iron oxide. There, new substance is formed. All these are the examples of chemical reactions or chemical changes. Okay? So, in chemical changes, mass of the substance also changes. Energy is either absorbed or released during the reaction. And chemical changes are irreversible. It is a permanent change. So, physical change is quite opposite to chemical change. Isn't it children? Yes. Once again to recall about the chemical change, in case of chemical changes, new substances will be formed, mass of the substance also will change and energy is either absorbed or released during the reaction. Chemical changes are irreversible. What is a pure substance? A pure substance consists of a single type of particle. Then what are the types of pure substance? According to the chemical composition, substances are classified 
either as elements or compounds what is an element it is the basic form of matter that cannot be broken down into simpler substances by chemical reaction what is an element it is the basic form of matter and it cannot be broken down into simpler substances robert boyle was the first scientist to use the term element in 1661 so the number of elements known at present are more than 100 92 elements are naturally occurring in nature how many 92 elements are naturally present in nature and the rest elements are made by man so out of 100 92 are naturally occurring and the rest are made by man and most of the elements are solid 11 elements are in gaseous state at room temperature two elements are liquid at room temperature which are the two elements that are liquid that is mercury and bromine are liquid at room temperature yes elements can be normally divided into metals non metals and metalloids metals show some properties non metals also have some properties and metalloids show the properties that is intermediate between those of metals and non metals okay let us study about metals metals are lustrous that means they have a shining appearance usually metals are silvery gray or golden yellow in color they conduct heat and electricity metals can be beaten into thin sheets and it can be drawn into wires also metals make ringing sound when it is hit so what are the properties of metals metals are lustrous that means they show shining appearance they are silvery gray or golden yellow in color they conduct heat and electricity they are malleable and ductile and sonorous that means it makes ringing sound few examples of metals are gold silver copper iron potassium sodium and so on mercury and bromine are the liquid metals at room temperature what are the characteristics or properties of non metals non metals display a variety of colors and they are poor conductors of heat and electricity they will not conduct heat and electricity at the same time they are opposite to metals we can see because even the non metals are not lustrous they will not have shining appearance they are not sonorous and they are not malleable they cannot be beaten into sheets or they cannot be drawn into wires they do not produce any sound or ringing sound when it is hit okay examples of non metals are hydrogen oxygen iodine carbon bromine chlorine what are metalloids so few elements are there which show the intermediate properties between the metals and non metals they show the properties of metals and non metals so they are known as metalloids for example silicon germanium and boron compounds elements combine chemically with one another in a definite proportion to form the compounds the composition of each new substance is always fixed 
the new substance formed will have different properties the constituents of compounds can be separated by chemical reactions example for compounds are water methane sugar salt and so on what are compounds elements will combine together in definite proportions to form the compounds in case of water that is h2o two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen combine together to form water which is a compound understood the lesson children yes